Nancy Brinker is the founder of the Susan G. Komen organization, which aims to end breast cancer by funding groundbreaking research and communi community advocacy programs. Here to educate us about Breast Cancer Awareness Month is global cancer advocate and consultant, Nancy Brinker. How are you all doing? Good. Thank, Thank you, you for joining, for joining us. us. It's so nice to be here. I love the oh, build good. on. I think the environment's fun. Good. Yeah. Yes. Good. Fun place to work. Well, October 1st today, October is Breast Cancer Awareness <sighs> Month. Um, can you share with us and our viewers the importance of breast cancer screenings? Well, breast cancer is one of the leading killers of women, sadly, and men get it too. About 200,000 people a year diagnosed with it. Uh, the reason I know all this is that I lost my only sister, Susan, uh, to breast cancer when she was 36 mm. in 1980. And she was diagnosed in 1978, and it was such a difficult, terrible journey that um, towards the end, and I was a, we, we were only two girls in her family, two sisters, um, she looked at me and took my hand and three weeks before she died and asked me if I would cure the disease, if I would do all I could to cure the disease. And in those days, um, you couldn't use the word breast out loud right. in radio, TV, film or newsprint. That was the only media we had. You know, imagine we didn't have cell phones. I know you can't imagine a time <laughs> like that. We didn't have computers. We didn't have fax machines. We really had nothing except the telephone and um, a lot of passion. And so I began, I was living in Texas at the time in my first job. She was living in Peoria, Illinois, which was our hometown. So I realized all the way through her journey, because I was with her all the time when she was being treated, I'd run back and forth. Eventually, we got her into a place called MD Anderson, who maybe some of you have heard of in Houston. Very few breast cancer doctors in the US at the time. And it was a terrible, terrible, sad journey. Mm -hmm. She was the most upbeat, beautiful, lovely. She was my older sister, and full of love, full of joy, full of everything. And. Um, she looked at when she asked me to do this. I promised her I'd do it. So, you know, I thought I was smart. I thought I was so smart. Uh, we'd put a man on the moon, and I said, we have all this money, and most of you weren't around then, of course. Uh, we had the war on cancer declared by Richard Nixon. And in a great bipartisan moment in this country, and everybody threw in a lot of money. But we did, <laughs> that was great. I figured, well, we have a lot of money. We have a lot of will. Probably I can get this done in about five years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> By the second day, I recognized how really not smart I was hmm. and that it was going to take probably a lifetime to get done what was wrong. And everything that happened as we went through her journey w was not good. Uh, all the way from she had one of the first breast screenings they used to do, and they were just, I don't know how anyone would call it a screening. You couldn't see anything. Right. It was ridiculous contrasted to today, where we have 3D mammography, and remember that, if you have a loved one that's going for a mammogram, it needs to be a 3D, a tomosynthesis. Mm -hmm. uh, 2D is the older version, not nearly as definitive, but anyway, everything from screening to the pathway that she, that, that she had to take for, this, for her care, and also the disparities that we would, we would observe every day. People treated so unequally or not at all because of where they lived or who they were or what they, money they didn't have or access they didn't have. And it was really then that I committed and I realized that was going to define the rest of my life. So that's what happened. That was 40 years ago. You mentioned the screening. Um, you know, a lot of people in our audience are in their 20s. Right. They may not think that they need to be screened. So what are the rules as far as early detection well, screening for people in their 20s? Yeah, you know, if you've Feel something, do something. You know how they always say, if you see something, say something? Feel something, do something. Tell your health care provider, even a nurse, a doctor, that you have something wrong, a lump. And by the way, men can develop breast cancer too, and a lot of it happens now. Uh, because we understand so much more about genetic causes of diseases and everything. And some people carry genes. Some cultures are known for carrying genes. African Americans die more from this disease because they often inherit a gene that, give, that, that, that is, puts them at risk for developing uh, what we call triple negative disease, which is virulent and needs to be treated immediately. Other people have more indolent forms of the disease. It's slow growing, you know, it's estrogen positive, we know how to deal with it. And um, in fact, a few years after Susie died, I developed uh, breast cancer mm. too. And as it turned out, 
we both were what they call BRCA positive, which mm -hmm. Ashkenazi Jewish women get a lot of times. So we know so much more today, uh, but it's really important to know it. Right, so screenings should start, screenings, at, mammograms should start at what age? It, well, it should start, I always think, and we've always said at Susan Komen around 35. 35. Mm -hmm. Now, That's if you uh, don't have a family history. So, yeah, and if you have a family history, again, if you feel something, there's nothing yeah. wrong with asking for a screening. If you're of childbearing age, ask for it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that way, and I also believe cervical screening is the same way. I think it's just shameful in this country that we talk about ending things like screening. Right. This year we had a big flap about cervical screening and they were gonna extend the amount of time and, and you know, here you have all this HPV virus, you have things going on that young women need to know about. Mm -hmm. But the same with breast screening. Every five years they start this sort of looking and examination at should we be doing screenings. Actually, they're the least ex ex expensive thing we can do in our healthcare, excuse me, healthcare system to determine whether you have at risk, whether you have, whether you are at risk, and to look and see what the internal tissue looks like in, inside a breast. You know, we can do amazing things when we find breast cancer early. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, driven the cure rate, uh, not the cure rate completely, but the survival rate up 40% yeah. wow. since we started it. And we can do a lot better than that when we finished or begin really addressing disparities the way we should in this mm -hmm. country. And when we fully educate all of you and you know when you're at risk or how you're at risk, you'll see that it will become a disease that will be chronic and that people can live with it. Mm. Yeah, fingers crossed. That's, that would be amazing. Yes. Well, Nancy, thank you so much for being here. Head to www.comen.org to learn more about breast cancer prevention and treatment. Thank you. That was really Thank you all for having me.